Yeah. So now, can I orchestrate this? Yes, yes, you know this better. That's the last thing that happens. First thing that is, so you guys are working? Yeah, yeah. John Squire takes our orders. Yeah, okay. We take our comments. Okay. Uh, and uh, I guess the three two. Megan, how you doing? I'm okay, my hair is Good, fine. excellent, thank you. I fi are you recording me? Yeah. Um, I fixed it so that when we're sending Shackleton come in before the last living room scene, they can actually be seen. You're kidding? Yeah. So. Just, <laughs> oh, that's awesome, thank yeah, you. No problem, so it should go last time. That's the way to go, good. And I'll talk to you about, um, about, um,
the way he could win love the sweet Emily. But now it seems that she prefers a man from Kilkenny. While he is gone for too long, he is bound to be in play. For Emily is staying alone, and she plans to entertain. Mr. Creed! Sir, when I told my wife you were going on this expedition, she accused me of taking you away from her for two years. She started screaming about how much she'd miss you. Go on, girl. A woman doesn't react like that unless a lover is involved. A lover? God help me, I'm not that. Then what are you? A friend? Just a good friend. I swear, I'll kill you if you're intimate with her. I never slept. Swear to that, I swear. Then why the reaction? I have eight sisters. I know women. I can read them like a book. And Emily is in love with you. I will not have a man like you aboard this ship. I'm canceling your permission to sail with the endurance. You're no longer aboard this expedition. I want you off the ship immediately. Your personal effects will be sent after you. You're still here, Mr. Green. Why is that? I can't believe this is happening. And don't come back! What's going on? I threw Crean off the ship. He's no longer with the expedition. Why? The man's dishonest. Dishonest? He's been having a secret affair with my wife, and I will not stand for that. Having an affair with your wife? Yes. So you've kicked him off the ship? Yes. <laughs> so you won't be coming with us right after? No. We'll be going from England for two years, and he won't be with us. That's right. Forced to stay in old England. Where he belongs. Where he belongs. Yes. We can come and go as he pleases. Yes. We can visit your wife whenever he likes. Uh, any interference from you. You'll be thousands of miles away in Antarctica. What? Something's the matter. <laughs> Wait a minute. Something wrong? I don't like this. I don't like the looks of this at all. I'm fine. You can give them off shit. Serves him right. I don't like the way this is turning out, Skipper. Shall I give the order to set sail? I made a mistake. I made a big mistake. Would you be so blind? You'd eventually cut wash to see your wife whatever he likes. Damn my temper! You should think before you speak. Help me, Skipper, please. I can't go. I can't leave here with her. I'm going to be sick just thinking about it. How old I sleep at night, how I leave the expedition. I'm mortally wounded. And the worst part <laughs> is, you did it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, what a fool I am. Come on, you can't go on moping about like it's the end of the world. The men will get uneasy if they see you act like this. Pull yourself together. Oh, but the thought of him being free to see her is tearing me up inside. You know what you have to do. What? Get him back on the ship. How oh, easier said than done. As soon as Crean discovers how wonderful life can be with me gone, and him having access to her day and night, he'll never want to come on board again. You have to force him to sail with us. How? Kidnap Crean? Keep your voice down. I want the men to hear you say that. They've got to think it's a legitimate operation. Uh, you men, come over here! <laughs> now, we have an important job to do for the expedition, and this is the time for royalty. Are you ready to help us? Of course. Whatever you say. We are going to bring Mr. Crean back to the ship. Crean is a strong man. He used to be a whaler. A couple of days ago, I saw him rip open a four-foot wooden chest with his bare hands. Now, we don't want anyone getting hurt, so we're going to carry these pistols. Please. <laughs> Very careful. I don't want my wife getting shot. Your wife? Yes, Mr. Crean is with the boss's wife. It's our job to get him back on board. <laughs> we've got nothing to be afraid of now. We've got these pistols. Whatever you do, be very careful not to shoot my wife. I well, wouldn't shoot her, so it's absolutely necessary. You're not going to shoot her at all. Make that clear to them, Skipper. There's to be no shooting of Emily. Got that, boys? If you say so. All right. Don't worry. We won't use these guns unless we have to. Not unless it's absolutely necessary. Not unless the girl gets tough with us. There's to be no shooting of my wife. No shooting your wife? Yes, under no circumstances. Very good, sir. Have you got that? Perfectly clear. No shooting your wife. Good. Go on, then. Just for argument's sake, sir, what if she threatens us, for example? Can we shoot her then? <laughs> no! Give me those guns! I will not have you risking her life! What about our lives? It's a risky operation! No woman could be a tough character! <laughs> My wife is not a tough character! She's a dainty little girl, this thing! She's not a threat to grown men! Come on, boys! Do the without guns. It's three of us against Crean, and we have the element of surprise on our side. I couldn't we take just one gun? Get out of here! <laughs> I 
I won't say these men are idiots, but they're pretty close to it, aren't they? I shouldn't have to worry about my own subordinate shooting my wife. I have enough trouble worrying about Mr. Cream. And speaking of Cream, I can just imagine what he's doing with her. Every opportunity he has, and it's making my blood boil. What would you do in my situation? Oh, I'll tell you what you'd do. You'd find a way to stop him. And that's precisely what I intend to do. Oh, I know he's a tough man. But if I'm a coward, I'm not afraid of him, if necessary, I'll... I'll beg him to stop saying that. <laughs> He accused me of having an affair with you. Well, what his exact words? He says, I have eight sisters, I know women, and Emily is in love with you. And then he came right out and accused me of sleeping with you. Oh, that is so unfair. He has no right to interfere in my life. Then what happened? He threw me off the ship. Oh, no, I'm really mad at you. But at least I'll get to see you for the two years while he's away. I know how I feel about you, but I just really wanted to go on this expedition. Why? Well, because they have a chance of being the first to go to the Get your hands off me! Don't argue with Mr. Cream. We have orders not to shoot the wife, but that doesn't include you. Leave him alone! Let's go! Stop fight! Come on! Stop this or I'll tell my husband! It's your husband, Sam! Just leave! Get your hands come off me! Let's go! Where are you taking me? Get, this is preposterous! Oh. Go! What 
I want is freedom from this anxiety. I can allow Mr. Crean to steal my enemy. I want to be a hero to prove how much I'm worth. And I will do it if I must go to ends of the earth. I want to be a leader for my sweet family and I will do what I must do to bring her back to me. I'll kill if I'm forced to to keep my Emily Safe from men who tempt her with infidelity. I want to be a hero to my sweet Emily, and I will do what I must do. I 
even though we are far away at sea. I think about them every day. Oh, give them teeth. It's natural for me to feel this way, and I, I understand how you must feel about me. I know you must be angry with me. But I can't wait to come home and see you again. <laughs> give you full permission to do whatever it is your heart decides. But I hope that you decide to spend the rest of your life with me. Signed, Ernest Chapman. <laughs> Most of South Georgia head, so do you want to take the helm? Yes. Make sure you proofread it carefully. Show it to me before mailing it. Yes, sir. I'll do rotten, rotten, rot away!
wrong with me? I shouldn't be hit by secretary. <laughs> Put yourselves in my shoes for a moment. I'm only human. I'm just a man like you, or you. I mean, there's Emily thousands of miles away, and she's going to get my letter telling it to love Mr. Crean. That's the last thing in the world I want to happen. I need to figure out a way of handling this short of going crazy and killing members of my crew. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, you can go below now. Oh, Ow. Oh, I think I have a broken rib. I shouldn't be hitting my secretary. I should be hitting Crean for loving my wife. No, sir, that wouldn't work. Why not? Mr. Crean is bigger than you. Good point, Skipper, good point. Feel any better now? No, I feel worse. I nearly killed my secretary, and Emily's still going to get that letter. Meanwhile, Mr. Crean probably loves her more than ever. I wish I knew how he really felt. He said he was coming on board this expedition to forget about her, but I don't think he was telling the truth. Well, there's only one way to find out. How? Get a woman involved. But there isn't a woman on the ship. Yes, we know that, but the men don't. What are you driving at? Remember that rumor about Norwegian models on South Georgia? <laughs> well, if Tom Crean was alone in a room with a beautiful Norwegian woman, we'd find out straight away whether or not he's still pining for her wife. <laughs> All we have to do is arrange for him to be alone with this woman. What woman? There isn't a woman on board. Yes, we know that, but the men don't. One of us poses as a Norwegian model. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Not at all. But one of us disguised as a Norwegian woman, alone in a room with Mr. Crean, and before you know it, we'll know exactly what's on his mind. But we don't have the form, the figure, the... You know what I mean? Well, we don't have to. The men are so worked up over this rumor, the merest hint there's a Norwegian woman on board will <laughs> fire their imaginations. But we don't look the part. We don't have to. We'll hide under a sheet. Uh, our, our voices would be a dead giveaway. Tell them the woman is mute. <laughs> mute? Yes, yeah, a beautiful mute Norwegian model. <laughs> Let me get your disguise ready. Hey, my, my, my disguise? Why me? You want to hear what he first says first hand, don't you? You want to know what he's thinking? Of course. Here, let's get your out. <laughs> I, I can't see. Yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> Where am I? Now, I'm going to tell Mr. Crean a beautiful mute Norwegian woman is here to see him. <laughs> what if he tries to take the sheet off? I'm telling you, too shy to be seen on the first date. Well, hurry up and get him. I can't breathe in here. Put your voice down. It's supposed to be mute, remember? <laughs> Mr. Green! Hello, I understand you wanted to see me. My name is Tom Green. You can call me Tom. I'm very flattered you wanted to see me. I don't know how you got on board this ship, but I'm glad you're here. I've been deprived of a woman's company for two months now. It's been very difficult. You're a Norwegian model. I can imagine how beautiful you are. That soft skin. Those beautiful eyes. What's your name? <laughs> you know, it's been a very long time since I've had a heart to heart talk with a woman. Very attracted to you. <laughs> Only I can see you. <laughs> and he told me you were conservative, and I respect that. <laughs> I know you must be beautiful. Soft skin. Those long legs. <laughs> you remind me of someone. Very dear to me. I'm very flattered that you wanted to talk to me. I understand that my heart belongs to another woman that I left behind in London. A oh, sweet girl. Sweetie she is. Her name is Emily. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! I'll kill you!
I'm going to return home a successful explorer who's reached the South Pole. But I'll be a hero to every woman in England, and that includes Emily. Here they come now. What shall I act? Like I haven't a care in the world. I want word to get back to Emily that I'm the better man. So, some loose pack ice has been spotted dead ahead. Bad guys, Mr. Cree. <laughs> this ship is a match for that. Full speed ahead! <laughs> Full speed ahead, sir. Into the ice. That's right. <laughs> yeah, sir. Full ahead! I'll show them. I'm not afraid of anything. Sir, I really don't like the look of that pack. No oh, pack ice be damned. We can plow right through it. Icebergs! Fall no fault now! The endurance is the strongest ship ever made to stay in polar waters. That's what they said about the Titanic. Ah. Pack ice ahead! Sir, I really don't like the look of those icebergs. Prepare for impact! Relax, Skipper. This is nothing you'll see. We'll steam right through the pack like a hot knife, cutting through butter. Brace yourself! <laughs> Damn it, what was that all about? We hit the ice. Another bird's but more poor foul. We hit the pack, sir. Why is the ship stopped? Mr. Cream! No ahead! Sir, why is the ship stopped? We're up against the pack, sir. Sir? I believe the hull is cracked. Oh, stop. Water is rushing into the ship. Fire oh, no! The ship is splitting under the pressure. Do something. The endurance is being pulverized. Who was that? The ship is splitting in two. My ship. My ship is being crushed by the ice. It's sinking right under our feet. Oh, water is pouring into the hull. I hope the ship sinks. I'll never see Emily again. He's like a coward, Ross. I never want to see you again. But all my hopes and dreams are sinking with this ship. We can survive on the ice. If you bring these men home safely, you will be the greatest hero England has ever known! I will. Your name in all the papers, you mean? Emily will love you! So, you're saying that this whole situation with the ship shaking us being stranded on the ice can be turned completely around? Yes! All you have to do is take charge and leave the men home! Oh, she's going down, boys! It's about the park! Forget about the It's hopeless! We're not going to survive! We're going to take it out of the Men! The ship is sinking. In an hour, she'll sit below the surface and be gone forever. I'm giving the order to abandon ship. Now we go home. You heard him. Let's get those lifeboats onto the ice. Aye, aye. Bring these men home safely. You'll be the greatest hero alive. I'll bring them home, all right. Well, my name is not Ernest Shackleton. I'm a man of action. A man who knows what he's doing. I'm a world-class explorer at the full height of my powers. Yes. <laughs> when things get bad, I persist. Though I'm stranded at sea, I enter. Optimist, and it don't bother me. You tell me that my ship did sink in the Antarctic <laughs> Sea. That may be bad, but do not think I let it bother me. You say my wife has left, she left, and that she's a cheat. Don't bother him, <laughs> that boy shit. That may be bad, but my dear friends, I don't, I won't have it to be. Let me repeat, be serious <laughs> and be crazy. <laughs> and the end is near. That's true. <laughs> but my dear friends, I shall. Persevere, for life is but a game, a game. attitude is king. Nah, don't bother him, <laughs> look at that crazy grin. And there is nothing that you can't do, if you will just dance and sing. Don't bother me, don't bother him, don't bother me, don't bother him, don't bother him, don't bother, me. Don't bother, him. Don't bother her.
refund your money for, for the same convenience. I'm going to refund your money after the show. Okay. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.
I made one attempt to reach the pole with Scott. It came within 97 miles of victory. That expedition convinced her to marry me, but it took two years out of my life. Two long years in which I was without her. Two cold years in which my body and soul were tested. And then after we'd been married for a few months, she decided that 97 miles wasn't close enough. And she told me that unless I actually reached the pole, her father would urge her to divorce me. So now here I am in another expedition. I rack my brains trying to impress that girl and her father. And it's four years without her. Skipper, I will not let another man steal her away from me. Not after what I've suffered to win her. Excuse me, Skipper. One of the men lost his diary, but there's no name in it. Who should I do it? Ask about it, dinner. Someone will claim it. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Huss. Give it here. I'll find out who it is. Yes, sir. God, it looks like Creed's diary. Really? Oh, you can't look in there. It's an ethical. Oh, ethics be damned. I want to see what he's thinking. <laughs> The last entry is a love note to Emily. How do you know it's Mr. Crane's diary? His name isn't in it. Who else would be writing love notes to my wife? Good point, sir. Good point. Sir, I just mentioned to the bedroom I found a diary and Mr. Crane said it was his. Ah, didn't I tell you? Tell him to come up here and claim it. Yes, sir. What does it say? Dear diary. What is wrong with me? I cannot get Emily out of my mind. I think about her every day, how I have struggled to forget her, but it's impossible. Being on the same ship with her husband is torture. The man constantly suspects me of loving his wife, and I'm constantly lying to him, claiming I have no feelings. But if the truth be known, I'm beside myself with love, even though I haven't seen her in more than a year. I understand you found my diary, sir. Yes, Mr. Tree. And I've read enough to discover the truth. Apparently you're still in love with my wife. Sorry you found that, sir, but that proves nothing. Does this prove nothing, Mr. Cream? Written two weeks ago. In all the world there is only one woman for me, and her name is Emily Shackleton. <laughs> <laughs> How sweet to me is that first name. How abhorrent to me that last. Her name should be... Emily Cream. And now I know that it is my life's ambition to make sure that it is. <laughs> you don't understand, sir. I can explain that entry. Can you explain this entry, Mr. Creed? Written one week ago. How could she ever have chosen him in the first place? <laughs> he is such a fool, a nitwit, an incompetent. If only I could get rid of him, then things would be perfect. I am sure she loves me. How painful it is to be on the same ship with that man because I'm in love with his wife. <laughs> and I will not rest until she tells me that she loves me. I can explain that entry. <laughs> can you explain this entry, Mr. Green? <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> if only he was dead! If only Emily was mine! I love that woman more than I love life itself! Those are just writing exercises. <laughs> I was practicing my prose style. You don't have a prose style, Mr. Creed. You have a bullshitting style. But it's true. I have had enough of your insolence. You were in love with her back in England, and despite being away from her for a year, you're still in love with her. And not only that, you have the gall to put it all in writing where anyone can read it, and to wish me dead. You've insulted my intelligence, my honor, and my wife. No choice but to challenge you to a duel. <laughs> a duel to the death. A duel. I wish it hadn't come to this. As the challenged party, you have your choice of weapons. What shall it be, Mr. Crean, the manly sword or the ever trusty pistol? <laughs> I choose harpoons. <laughs> no, Mr. Crean, not harpoons. <laughs> Harpoon is an art, and as a whaler of many years, you're a master of that art. It's not fair. I have no proficiency in the harpoon. The choice of weapons is mine, and I choose harpoons. <laughs> but I don't know anything about harpoons. <laughs> You're completely ignorant of the mode of use. In fact, I've never even picked one up, let alone thrown one. Can you admit that you're wrong and take back your challenge and, and agree that I've never done anything to wrong you or your wife? No. You've been in love with her all along, and now I have all the evidence that I need. I 
can see it in your eyes. I can hear it in your voice. And I've read it in your diary. <laughs> <laughs> you insulted me for the last time. Then pick up your harpoon. I will use it. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hustle, will you be my second? Just give a second me, will you? Uh, yes, sir. What are you doing over there for my second? When he throws that thing, a slide will go straight through you and into whoever's standing behind you. <laughs> Thanks for your confidence. Let's get stuff. This is really unfair. Oh, life is unfair. According to the rules, you'll each take ten paces, turn, and fire. I mean turn, and begin to duel. I can't take ten paces with this thing. I can barely walk. <laughs> you challenged me to a duel. I don't even know how to use it. All right. To make it even-handed, I'll fight with my harpoon reverse. Oh, that's more than fair. Yes, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> now stand back to back. Take ten paces, turn, and duel. One, two, three, ten! He used to be a whale, and that's how they club the whales. Stop comparing me to a whale! I'm not a fish! <laughs> and no one's gonna club me! Uh, careful, sir! Keep your wits about you! Uh, oh, he's the first, and he's doing a better job of it! Stop your jabbing me! I can't concentrate! You want to stop, sir? I never stop betting until I'm finished with it! I 
expedition, it becomes necessary to destroy the dogs. Although I could forgive the man who pulled the trigger, I could never Although forgive I could them. forgive the man who pulled the trigger, I could never forgive the man who ordered them shot, and I shall hate him till my dying day. <laughs> I'll have nothing more to do with him. <laughs> they are like children to me. The man who orders them shot is killing my babies. And I will never look on him again, no matter who it is, even if it happens to me. My own husband. Oh, my God, help me. Well, stay now, sir. We're being coward. She's going to hate me. What have I done? Sir, use yourself with sniveling pulp. Strip yourself with your dignity. You're simpering like a craven animal. Did you carry out sir, this order? No. I couldn't bring myself to shoot those dogs. I shot to the snow without my frustration. So they're still alive? Not a hair on their heads harmed. Court martial me if you like. Do you mean he disobeyed your orders? He didn't shoot the dogs after all. He disobeyed my orders. Yes. I am court martial. <laughs> Let there be a lesson to you! He didn't shoot them! They're still alive! <laughs> oh, have a walk the plank! <laughs> what plank? The ship's sank! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. 
classmate. Sir, what is it, Mr. Green? I, God, I can't take it, bloody hell. I think I know. What how to, is it, Mr. Green? I can't hit you with this wind. I think I know. Let's 
let's celebrate! Not so fast. This is good as being home. There's one little problem. What is it? We landed on the wrong side of the island. What do you mean? The whaling station's on the other side. Why don't we just sail around? The rudder broken. We can use the sail. We can't tap against the wind on the northwest side of South Georgia this time of year. We've blown out to sea before about five miles. We've still got some strength left in us. Why don't we row? It's impossible. Against that current? Especially without a rudder. Oh, bloody hell. Why did I have to break just as we got on so? How wide is the island? Can't we make the trip on foot? Never been done before. There's a reason for that. These glaciers are impassable. But even if they weren't, look at our position on this beach. The mountains rise straight up from the water. We're trapped. What are we going to do? We're going to die! <laughs> We've got no choice but to wait for a passing ship to spot us. I thought things were bad when the ship sank, but they got worse. <laughs> I thought things were bad on Elephant Island, but they got worse. <laughs> I thought things were bad on the rowboat, but they got worse. And now this? Things just keep getting worse. I tell you it's expected. This whole trip has been cursed. When things look really, really bad, they keep on getting Just might work. What? You have to 
pretend to be his wife. <laughs> pretend to be his wife? Yes. Look, he's in a deep depression. He doesn't see her. He'll never recover. Oh, I can't do that. You did it for our musicals on board the ship. You can do it now. Oh, <laughs> play. You want to die on this ice? All right, what do I have to do? Let me fix you up. He's dreaming. He'll never know the difference. I wish I could see you, Emily. Talk to him as if you were Emily. Bastard! 
Get off that again, or I'll give you another slap. Where did you learn your man? 
time I walk her acts to me when I come home. <laughs> I can never say anything wrong to her. She's always saying, Don't touch mine! Keep away from don't touch that one! Don't touch the other one neither! <laughs> you. But you're just like her. <laughs> She's always saying, oh, I've got a headache! I've got a headache! Stop like, can complain and pay a mess is what it is. <laughs>
this time. I thought I was going to lose you to Mr. Green. No chance of that. I don't want anything to do with men. The coots! Who is that? Excuse me. No, I uh, heard something coming from behind the screen. I didn't hear anything. Is someone here? But there couldn't be. I'm all alone. Mr. Green! <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> What are you doing here? I can explain this, you see. I'm walking by after we've got No, don't bother trying to explain it. So you became a lesbian, did you? A strict lesbian? You've been too tiny me for two years with this rat! How could I be too tiny if he was on the expedition? Well, you've been in love with him all along, and you couldn't wait to see him again. It's not true. You don't understand. What was he doing here if you are a lesbian? He just came over to say hello. That's right. Then why was he hiding? If nothing was going on, then why was he hiding? He got nervous when he heard you were coming and he thought it would upset you to find him here, but really it's all innocent. Nothing was going on. Yeah. Nothing was going on? No. I feel like I'm going mad. <laughs> I've tried for two years to get you to forget about my wife, but I've failed. Really? So you have nothing to worry about? How can you say I have nothing to worry about? I was just visiting her, that's all. I want to speak to you over here for a moment. You were just visiting her? Yes, sir. Why? Can we speak man to man? Yes, I want you to. I like her as a friend. There's just something different about her from other girls. I don't know how to put it into words. She's just easy to talk to and understand. Do you think she's a lesbian? <laughs> sir, I would venture to bet that she isn't. What are you two talking about? Give us a moment, please, dear. There's nothing going on between us. You must understand. Sure, just give us a moment. You're crazy about her, aren't you? No, sir. You're in love with her, aren't you? No, sir. You wish you were married to her, don't you? I knew it! No, I, I just think she's wonderful, that's all. Oh, I think she's wonderful, too. She's got such lovely eyes. Yes, she does. And that voice. Yes. Oh, and that smile. Yes. Thanks. Yes. No, no, thanks! I'll forget you! Okay. I'm an innocent man! He says he's an innocent man. That's a load of bollocks. I caught him in my living room alone with my wife. And take a gander at the way he's looking at her. There's only one interpretation for that. And there's only one thing for me to do to save the situation. But I don't know if I can do it. What am I saying? Of course I can do it. It's my trump card. The Shackleton trump card. All my life, my pretty wife did things to make me suffer. But when things get tough, my motto is Shackleton gets tougher. <laughs> this is the most difficult thing I've ever had to do in my entire life. But watch how I handle it. In the grand old Shackleton style. I finally understand what's going on here. You don't understand anything. Yes, I do. So really, you don't. He's in love with you. I can sense it in his manner. I can see it in his eyes, I can hear it in his voice. And maybe nothing's happened between you two yet. Oh, but he's in love with you nonetheless. In his opinion, I'm a fool. He's just waiting for you to grow tired of me. Waiting for his chance to steal you away from me if he hasn't done so already. Nonsense, you talk when you put your mind to it. I've been with him for two years. I know him so well, I can virtually read his mind. Now I know what I have to do. And I know that I can do it. What are you talking about? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with that oh. gun? What are you going to kill me? Is that how you're going to solve this? No, I'm too in love with you to do that. Thank God. I thought about killing myself. Now that's an idea. I'm depressed <laughs> enough <laughs> to do it too. Well, why don't you? Because I have a better idea. No, don't kill him. Don't shoot. Ooh. Sign this. Sign it! I don't sign anything until I have my lawyer look at it. Sign it or I'll pull the trigger! Sign it for heaven's sake, whatever it is. I don't know if it's for another set of encyclopedias. Sign it! Don't shoot! <laughs> Let's go! Wait, where are you taking him? It's a contract. Enlisting him on my new Antarctic expedition. We never did make it to the South Pole. We're going back. No, We're I... going for two years. I want you to let you do this to me. This will kill me. Say goodbye to him, Emily. I won't let you do this. 
Thought you were a lesbian. I'm not. I lie. I love you, Ernest. Only you, darling. I love you. If you're telling the truth, then you'll wait for me. We'll be gone, and for two years, when we come back, you can tell me how you feel. It's off to the ice for us. Yes, we're going to give Creed another chance to forget about you. I don't want to go back, sir. I've forgotten her, sir. Oh, she's completely out of my mind. I don't want to go back to the pole. Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Green. We all do. We miss it. It was our home for so long, we can't function anywhere else. When we come back to England, we get mixed up in stuff like this. We're going to go sort it all out on the ice. Not the ice again. Goodbye, darling. Let's go. We've got some exploring to do. We're going south. As far south as we can go. Shackleton. To the sun. To the sun. To the 